I am here at the Microsoft Xbox One X event. We're looking at Shadow of War. And um, can you say your name and your title? Uh, my name is Matt Allen. I'm the director of technical art at Monolith Productions. Great. So what are we um, what are we jumping into here? Obviously, we've got some leveled up uh, <laughs> characters. This isn't the yeah, beginning so, of the game. No, this isn't. So we're pretty we're pretty far into the game. This is actually a region called Gorgoroth, which is uh, one of the later regions in the game. It's at the foot of Mount Doom. And what we're seeing right now is we're actually going to do a fort assault. And this is one of the highest level forts that we have. So uh, as we just saw earlier, all six of the overlords and war chief, they're all full. Like we're going to have to take out six war chiefs before we finally get to the overlord. On the flip side, our army is pretty buffed up too. We've spent a lot of time sort of picking the right guys and, and having some pretty high level orcs as our followers. Oh uh, yeah, so here we've got the, we've got the overlord with his badass helmet, Zugor the Arbitrator. So let's talk a little bit about the what goes into the essentially the set design here. Obviously, you've got all of Middle Earth to take as inspiration from the various sources, but um, you know, running in 4K, running on the console, HDR, you've got to definitely get in with the detail. How um, how did you how did you take direction? What was it? Peter Jackson as inspiration? Was it some of the classic books? Where what is the underlying? Um, identity of Shadow of War? That's, yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's a fantastic question. You know, we, a lot of it just stems from the Nemesis system. So from, in Shadow of Mordor, we introduced this system of like an orc hierarchy that your interactions changed and controlled the types of orcs and the types of personalities these guys were. And so we really tried to expand that so that every single orc, captain, war chief, and overlord is unique. And so our, a lot of our sort of visual cues come from having to make a bunch of you know different orc tribes uh, different sort of orc faces body types like all of these things and so we took you know certainly the the, the films there was a lot of influence there but a lot of their orcs were very similar uh, and we had to make a much wider range to sort of really show off the nemesis system so and how important is the is the detail I mean obviously you know, when you're getting close up like this, how how do you put the uh, the effort into the facial animation? What's going on behind the skeleton so that you can tell the difference between a pissed off orc and an aggressive yeah, orc? So, yeah. So I mean, the the details are huge here. Uh, each each of these orcs has to feel unique and look unique, and that comes from not only their you know their clothes they wear, their size, the tinting on their armor, the types of armor they have. But as you said, it also comes from their voice and their face animations and their faces themselves. And in fact, we built a brand new facial animation system just for this project because we knew we were going to need to do a lot more lines than the last one. And we really had to sort of make that as streamlined as possible to do as many unique and interesting facial animation and lines as, as we could. That's actually, that's a great question. Real quick, can you just point out some of the highlights of the UI? Coming into it you know, from a bunch of other games, I'm seeing a lot of red, a lot of blue, things flashing, orange. What, what's going on here? Yeah, so the, the Ford Assaults, so they throw you into the deep end. Uh, the, the amount of chaos going on, not just with the orcs, but also trying the data we're trying to show you. So we have the, the four victory points up in the corner, but we also show those on the screen. He actually just healed one of his guys who is bleeding out. So your captains, you have a relationship with them and you want to make sure that that relationship doesn't fall onto hard times by ignoring them. So we have this on the corner there, it says he's bleeding out. You know that one of your captains is about ready to die. Each of the orc captains and war chiefs who have died also drop loot. And that's what all these sort of floating golden things are, is that those are, a bu that's a bunch of loot for our new loot system. Uh, what other icons? I mean, yeah, we've got icons. we got the captain icons over their heads. Are you going to go into the... Yeah, so he's going to update. He just picked up a bunch of really good gear. And so what he's doing now is he's actually going through and updating a lot of the stuff. That, so in this case, he's replacing his armor with an epic set of armor, which changes how Talion looks. But more importantly, adds a bunch of buffs uh, to, to uh, both his armor. And then you also... What else did you change? You're doing it pretty fast. Dagger. Dagger. Yeah, so stealth. Now, looking at the orc captains, is this something that um, they're fully friendly AI by themselves, or can you give them orders, give them direction? So, yeah, so you can give them direction. Uh, you can have map them as bodyguards. 
they will do their own thing. They have a full AI set, uh, just like the orc enemies. They have goals. They will go and try to do stuff on their own. They have their own fears, their own traits. They have their own internal feuds with each other. So sometimes your captains will actually start fighting against each other because they have some sort of hate of each other. And so, yeah, like the whole point of the Nemesis system is to build these sort of um, like uh, immersive interactive stories from these types of relationships. It's really, a, there's a lot of emergent stuff going on with all of these systems layered on top of each other. Great, and weapon wise, we, you know, we've seen a sword, we see the bow and arrow, we saw the dagger upgrade. Uh, what about um, larger weapons? Is the artillery and such something in the background, or do you get to control so, any yeah, of that? You can actually, so the, the artillery grogs, uh, if you go and damage them enough, you can take them over and, and basically jump on them like giant tanks. Uh, you can also, so right there we have a, a Karagor. He could dominate that Karagor and ride it around, and those, those beasts are pretty brutal. Uh, same thing with the grogs, the wild grogs, and the drakes. So there's a lot of different ways to sort of approach this scenario and there's a lot of different weapons. He actually just also showed the, the new heavy attack which is Kel Brimbor's glaive. Yep, there it is. Uh, and that's really good for, you know, when you've got a ton of orcs around you, especially in these fort assaults, to really give yourself some space. Actually, this is actually pretty good. So what he's done here is he has broken uh, an enemy captain and he's now dominated him. And he gets a choice of what he could do once he's dominated him. In this case, he's brought him over to his side. So he's now made him a follower by dominating his mind, and he just told him to stay and fight. So he will now fight with us through the rest of this assault. So you can add captains during the assault. Yep. Yeah, you can add captains live at any point in time. Now, one of the things about this title is it's PC and Xbox One. Yep. What um, What's the control scheme like? How does it differ on the PC? Is it just controller, or do you oh, got no, the keyboard do, and mouse? Yeah, we do. We have full keyboard and mouse support. Monolith is a, like, we go back, we're an old school PC developer, and so, like, we take all of our PC stuff really seriously. Uh, we PC was one of our primary development platforms. It's not an afterthought for us. And outside of these large assaults, what, uh, what type of gameplay can we expect? <laughs> I know that's an yeah. open-ended question. Yeah, it's an open-ended question because it's an open world. Uh, you know, a lot of the same stuff that you saw in Mordor. There's a lot of stealth. Um, there's a lot of side missions around the Nemesis. There's also just the whole story missions. Uh, and we've really tried with the story missions to not only expand those, but to tie them better into the Nemesis system. So you see a lot of these orcs that you're building through your interactions actually show up and pop up in, this, in the story itself. If you can go a second just to the uh, overview map, Sorry to pull you out real fast. Uh, region map. So here you see, oh, no, you're in the, yeah, you're in a fort assault, so everything else is off. Never mind. We'll see that at some other point in time. You're like, why am I going to this? But basically, you know, tons of side missions, uh, a full Golden Path story mission on top of this battle for the regions of Mordor that we're seeing right now. Nice last question yeah. is, um, what specifically in here is Xbox One enhanced? What are Xbox One X owners going to see that Xbox One S owners will not? Right, uh, so the full 4K HDR, like that is the, that's the primary thing you're getting here. Um, there's a lot, you know, from a, from a gameplay standpoint, we wanted to make sure that it was a balance across the board so we don't add any extra AI or anything like that. Mostly we're focused on final visual details, like higher poly counts, more particles, uh, certainly more Ks. Yeah, a lot more pixels we're pushing, and then obviously the HDR is a really big deal for us too. Cool. Any last minute stuff you wanted to point out before we wrap it up? Uh, October 10th. You should get it. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, thank you.